Now, hopefully we'll be together uh, sometime soon. But for now, I'm really excited to get to spend the next couple of weeks singing and learning and, and delving into the creative musical process, exploring some of the midrashim that go behind the music and uh, and thinking about what it what it feels like to really express what the words of our tradition are saying. Uh, but before we begin, I think we should just start with, uh, with the nigun. We'll enter into this space with uh, just a wordless melody. So whenever you're ready, just jump into it, uh, as you've probably uh, figured out based on uh, experiences with Zoom, the only way that we can sing together is uh, if we all are on mute at the same time. So if you haven't yet muted yourself, please make sure to do so. It's the strangest thing about uh, being able to sing together, but it also gives an opportunity to, to hear the strength and beauty in your own voice in a way that you don't get to do when you're with a group of people. You usually hear it blended into the whole, the whole ensemble, the whole choir. So to be able to hear your own voice is uh, a unique experience too. So we're going to start with this nigun, and while we're singing it, allow yourself to just listen for a moment to, to notice what you notice, to feel what you feel, and, and try and think about what the, the melody is trying to, to tell us to do. What emotion is it evoking? Where are we supposed to go with a melody like this? We'll start it whenever you feel ready. Hopefully, you'll come and join me. Good evening. Chodesh Tov, everyone. Um, if you, if we're going to try and utilize the, the chat a whole bunch this, this evening because we have a whole bunch of people, so it's a little harder to see each other all on one screen. Um, so if anybody wants to share, uh, what kind of energy is, is this, this Nigun trying to evoke? What kind of emotions? What are, we, what are we feeling right now? What are we bringing into this space with us this evening? 
You could also unmute too if you wanted to, whichever, whichever mode you're choosing this evening. Joy and upbeat feeling. Ah, it was wild, just what I needed right now. <laughs> Thanks so much, Lainey. All right, we got this feeling of joy, something that we're you know really really needing right now. Frida says connection. Yeah, thankfulness, beautiful, positive, encouraging. Yes, right. These nigunim they take us to places. Heschel says that uh, the, a wordless melody can take us to a place where utterable words it could never possibly reach. Right, it takes us to this escape, this somewhere else. But it's not. It's not an escape. It's a return to where the soul wants to be. To this place before we even had words. This is what we had. We had melody. We had nigun. Uh, we have this centering. We have this joyful sound. Right. We have this. Uh, this beauty. And so uh, I wanted to sing, you know, the, the, the nigun, it changes the space, it changes the, the atmosphere. And, and I wanted us to have this sort of this happy, this fun nigun because we're, uh, we're entering a new month. We just finished, you know, for just this evening, we finished, we concluded Rosh Chodesh. We're entering the month of Kislev, the month where we celebrate Hanukkah. And it, it, it feels to me that the, the months take on the emotions of the holidays that are within them. And so Kislev becomes the whole month filled with light, a month that sits in the darkest time on our calendar where we're entering winter, it gets colder, it gets darker, and we have this holiday that's all about light and lifting each other up and the weak overcoming the mighty and the small overcoming the large and getting together to, to celebrate and, uh, and lift each other up. So, uh, so that's where we're going to begin with this, uh, with this nigun. Thanks for, uh, for bringing us into that energy. And so I wanted to talk to you over the course of the next three weeks about how I think about writing melodies. And I write a lot of melodies for liturgy, mostly from the Sidur, for our, for our prayers, and also from different pieces in the Jewish canon. And I, I do that because um, I'm trying to, I take a look at the words and I try and think about what are these words trying to say and how can the melodies we use help to better express that emotion. Right, as, as Cantor already said, it's, it's all about the text, right? We have these beautiful melodies, but the words are, are they open us up. And the words in the Sidur are this sort of pathway to opening up the words that are in our hearts as well. And the hard thing is that we have this one book filled with the words, but we come back to those same words every single time. And how can we find a way to be newly inspired by them as often as we return to them? And I think that's what, that's what these, these melodies have the possibility to do. And I've studied a lot of different texts that help to open them up to the emotions that I think these, these prayers are trying to evoke. Um, but before we get into the conversation about music, I just wanted to talk for a few minutes about prayer. When we're talking about prayer, what what is what is prayer supposed to do? What is supposed to be happening in the moment of prayer? What is this endeavor all about? What's happening in prayer? What are we supposed to be doing? What's going on? You can either, we could type it in the chat or you can unmute also. So I, th I think some of the same words that were just used it's supposed to connect, inspire, encourage, when it works. Nice, beautiful, thanks. So, so it's supposed to connect, inspire, right? When it works, it's supposed to connect us to people around us. We use a lot of the words that you see in the chat. Okay, I'm seeing a whole bunch of things here. It's, it's hakarat hatov, it's acknowledging the good in the world, it's communicating with God, it's becoming uplifted, it's something personal. It's something interactive, some kind of interacting interaction. Uh, all right, it's thanking God, becoming grateful. It's meditative. Okay, so even just from these 10 or so answers that we have already here, it's pretty clear that prayer is trying to accomplish a whole lot at the same time, right? It's supposed to be personal, yet connective to the people around us. It's supposed to be internal, yet it's also supposed to help us talk to God and talk to the community around us. It's supposed to be meditative, but it's also supposed to be loud and filled with song and music and words, right? So it's, it's doing a whole lot all at the same time. And it's really hard, I think, for prayer to accomplish all of those things at the same time for all of us, right? Right, right, Paul said it's it's when it when it works it does all these things, but uh, but it doesn't always work for all of us all at the same time. And I think that that prayer is one of the hardest things that any religious person is asked to do. Any person or any person in general, the, the endeavor of prayer is a very difficult thing. And the rabbis and the liturgists, the people that that created the words of our siddur, they knew this and they put that in the siddur. So you see, on Shabbat morning, right in the middle of the prayers, when we're sort of warming ourselves up in Pesukei Tzimra, right before. We we get into this central aspect of the Sidor, the Shacharit service, we see the words, 
If my, if my mouths could be filled with song as the water fills the sea, as the oceans fill the waves, if I could have that amount of words, even so, I still wouldn't have enough words to thank you, God, for the thousands upon thousands of thousands of things that are done for me every single day. But right there in the text, we use words to say, these words are never going to be enough. And I think that's a real amazing honesty. And it, it shows us that these words that are in this you are written by human beings, right? These are feelings that, that people, human beings have had for hundreds of years. And that means that that the things that we're feeling in our hearts, that we're feeling in our minds and souls when we walk into tefillah can, be, can connect to those feelings and can, and can uplift and open up the words that are on the page. So uh, we're going to sing a whole bunch more in, in just a few minutes, but I wanted to just look at one of the first conversations about prayer in the Talmud and trying to figure out what, what really is supposed to be happening in this moment of prayer. How are we supposed to make this as meaningful as possible? And it comes from Masechet Brachot, um, and there's a whole lot of conversations about prayer that are happening here and a lot of different arguments about when you're supposed to pray, what prayers you're supposed to say, if somebody interrupts you during prayer? Are you supposed to say hello to them? Are they supposed to say hello to you back? Are you supposed to get in fights? Are you supposed to run away? Lots of interesting thing, questions that are happening with tefillah. Uh, and then we get to this one conversation. And so um, so I have two ways that I want to share with you. I'm going to put a link right here. If you want to click on this link, you can take a look at the at our source sheet that way. I'm also going to share my screen if it's easier for people to look at the at the source sheet that way. So you can, you can take a look either way. And I'll try and continue to monitor the chat while we're uh, while we're here okay so we're looking at this text prayer who yeah what is it good for okay so here we go we're talking about prayer and there's this conversation and what we have here is rabbi eliezer says kol haoset tefilato keva ain tefilato tachanunim right anybody who makes their prayer fixed that prayer is not tachanunim. We, we translate that as it's not supplication. It's not, it's not prayer, perhaps. We're not really sure what this word tachanunim means. So we have to try and figure out what is this, what is keva? What does it mean for our prayer to be permanent? What does it mean for it to be fixed? Because we don't want it to be fixed, according to Rabbi Eliezer, because being fixed would be a bad thing. It would mean that it's not real prayer. So we have this sort of machloket, this conversation, this argument about what really is prayer. So we got three answers. Let's take a look at them one at a time. So here we go. Answer number, answer letter A. Rabbi Yaakov bar Edi said that Rabbi Yoshaya said, it means anyone for whom their prayer is like a burden upon them, from which they seek to be quickly unburdened. Right? If your prayer is a burden upon you, then maybe that's not prayer. The thing that comes up for me whenever I think, I don't know if anybody ever experiences something like that. If you ever come to prayer and you're like, oh man, I got to do this right now. The the feeling that comes to me is I, I grew up at Camp Ramon, Wisconsin, and the morning prayer was celebratory and, and energetic and it's beautiful and musical. And then when you get to the older adult age groups, you also are, you pray Mincha and Mari, the afternoon and the evening services. And sometimes the counselors would forget that we had to do it at some point, And then they try and squeeze it in like right before dinner, or they squeeze it in like right before the kids are going to bed. And it always feels like, oh, man, we got to squeeze those prayers in. And it feels like in that moment, maybe that prayer, maybe we should have just paused that day and come back to it the next day. Maybe that would have really up allowed us to uplift our prayer in a different moment. Maybe that wasn't really the way that we were supposed to enter into prayer. I don't know if anybody has a similar experience to something like that. If you want to type in, share a story, or, or you can share with us in any other way. But that's, that's the first answer, okay, if it feels like a burden on you. Option two. The rabbis say, this refers to anyone who does not recite prayer in the language of supplication, but as a standardized recitation without emotion. All right, so what does it mean, belashon tachanunim? I don't think it necessarily means who doesn't recite the prayers in Hebrew. I think it means if you don't say the prayers with emotion, right? If we're not understanding the words that we're trying to say, if we don't look at them and say, these connect to the feelings that I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling happy, and so I want to say the prayers this way. I'm feeling nervous because I have a big presentation coming up today. I want to say the prayer this way. If we're not thinking about how we're feeling when we enter into this moment of prayer, maybe, maybe that also is not true prayer. It's not, it's not the kind of prayer that, that will uplift us. It's not supplication. Uh, and the final answer that we have here, which, you know, a lot of times in the Talmud, we're sort of left without understanding. They don't tell us which is the right answer, but usually they leave us with the, the last answer. We kind of feel like maybe that one takes the cake. So here's our third answer. And it says, Rabbah and Rav Yosef both said, it refers to anyone who is unable to introduce a novel element into their prayer. Kol no yachol lechadesh bodavar. It's something personal, something that reflects their personal needs, something to the prayer that's new. 
And that's what I want to take us to today. I want to think about how can we look at whenever we arrive in a moment of prayer, which I think could be any moment. Prayer is centering ourselves. It's acknowledging what's happening in our lives. It's allowing us to organize our thoughts and our feelings so that we can be the best version of ourselves at any given moment. That's what prayer does. It acknowledges that there's something out there greater than us. It connects us to God. It connects us to our community. But what we really need is can we find one moment in prayer that feels new? One moment in the Siddur when you look at it and you say, wow, I've never, I've never thought about it that way before. And, and so that's where I want to I wanna take us today. And so we're going to try and shine light in a couple of uh, a very old texts from our Siddur and try and think about how we can look at them in a variety of new ways. Sound good? You can do some thumbs up. Yeah? Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to make our way into our, our first prayer. And, uh, and the reason that I wanted to bring this one is because this prayer is about, about light. And uh, here we are in the month of Kislev. We're, ju- we're coming into this idea about, about bringing more light into the world. And it's also about art. It's about creation. Right? There's a whole bunch of different sections of the Siddur, the sections of the Shachrit service, creation, revelation, redemption. And the idea is that before we can ask for things, before we can give gratitude for the things that we have, we have to acknowledge that here we are on this earth. Wow, how amazing is it that we get to be human beings today, right? And so, so we're thinking about what does it mean to get to this primal, this original art piece? And, uh, and so, so let's take a look at this, uh, at this text. And... Uh, we're going all the way back to the very beginning, to Breshit bara Elohim, to the very first moment of creation. And we're trying to think about how can we look at text in a different way. So take a look. This is one of my favorite Midrashim. It's about these very first words, Breshit bara Elohim. And it follows that even now, far after the world was created, it's still as far as we are concerned in the beginning, right? It's still in the, in the beginning. It's still in this moment of beginningness because this particular creation is not like a typical creation that is made by the hands of an artist where after it is made, it no longer requires a maker, right? Think about a piece of pottery on a pottery wheel. As soon as it's done, you put it in the kiln, you sell it, and somebody else uses it. The artist has no need for it anymore, right? A painter puts a painting into a frame. It goes away. Nobody edit- edits it ever again. That's, that's not the same thing as with this creation of the world. Rather, every single day and at every hour, the world is in need of renewing. And should energy and a higher power cease to be put into it, God forbid, the world would return to chaos and disarray. Right, that, that this world is constantly, it's still on the, the pottery wheel. It still needs hands on it, helping spin it, help create it, helping moving it forward. And the idea, I think, is that it's up to us at this point. The world's already been created, and here we are creating new things in the world, doing new things in the world, being a part of action in the world. And, uh, and, so, and so I want us to take a look at this, at this particular prayer. It's Hameir La'aretz V'ladarim Aleh. It's from the Shacharit Sidur. It's a weekday prayer and a Shabbat prayer. We say it, it comes right after the Barachu, right? There's a whole bunch of prayers in the Sidur that are incredibly familiar, right? They're sort of like the benchmarks, Barachu and the Shema and the Amidah, these prayers that we're very familiar with. And then after we say one of them, we go into our little murmurai, right? Has anyone ever... And we sort of make our way through all of these words. And and sometimes when you do that, you can get fixated on one word, you can get fixated on one line, or we just sort of move our way through them until we get to the next box and pick up and sing them together. But these words, one day, they're the words that come right after the Baruch And one day, after looking at them the same way for many, many years, I suddenly looked at them and I said, oh my God, these words are saying something really powerful. God who illuminates the world and all who live upon it with mercy. And in God's goodness, every single day, God renews the act of creation. And I thought about it. What does it mean for creation to be renewed every single day? What does it mean for there to be newness in the world every single day? I think the idea is that there's so many new, there's new birth, there's new plants, there's new things that are happening every single day, but also that you yourself are new every single day. You can't live today the same way that you lived yesterday because you have all of yesterday's internal experiences in t- inside of your memory bank. You have to make new choices or at least newly informed choices, right? That's what's happening. We have the power to be partners with God in, in what it looks like to create new things in the world. And 
Hebrew is a, is a gendered language. We speak about God mostly using masculine suffixes, and especially in the Siddur. And I thought in thinking about a God who rebirths the universe every single day, recreates, gives birth, what does it feel like? What would it sound like? What would it taste like to speak about God, to pray about God using in the feminine? Hametira, she who illuminates the universe every single day with mercy, from rechem with the from the word womb. Right, it's very clear that there's this sort of feminine aspect in this particular phrase. So, what would it feel like to explore the prayer, to open our eyes up to it in a new way, and speak of it and pray of it in this way? And the idea is that it goes very back to the very beginning when there was just nothing. There was only a hum, a primal hum, and then suddenly there was a bang, and then the universe got bigger and bigger and bigger, and it encompassed all of us. And here we are getting to create this moment together. So we're going to try and sing out together with just a hum. We're going to build up this hum together, and we're going to try and sing out these words, Hametira. We'll see if these words are opened up to us in a new way today. These words that are about illuminating the world with light. And as we're singing it, um, I want you to think about who this week has brought you light. Who this week has brought you some light? Whether that was a call from a friend that you hadn't talked to in a long time, somebody that you got to connect with, a piece of news that you got to hear that was wonderful. What's brought you light? If you want to share it while we're singing, if you want to type it into the chat, that'd be wonderful. If not, just think to yourself, who, who's brought you some light? And also, who could you send out some light? Who could you illuminate in this coming week? Starts just with a hum. Try it with me. Hum, ha, hum, 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 That's the whole hum part. Hum it out with me. Hum, ha, hum, ha, 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 hum, ha, hum, Just like that. Hum, ha, hum, ha, Let's sing Hameira, 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 La Aretz, Vela Darim, Aleha Birachami. Just like that, Hameira, Hameira, Hameira. Every sheet, ma said, the rain sheet. Hum a now, hum a now, hum a now, now, hum, ha, hum, ha, ha, hum, ha, hum, ha, 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 hum, ha, 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 Like that beautiful Hameira, 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 
feel their heart racing a little bit i feel like uh in some way prayer is supposed to have these moments of uh of calm but also these moments of uplift it should change our space change our our uh, our energy um thanks so much to people for for sharing some of these beautiful things that are lighting them up We've got some good news pfizer and moderna cute grandchildren the birdies who are participating in tzipere shalom at home that that's pretty cool to be able to do tzipere shalom at home i i, I like that um, grandchildren, oh, beautiful. So that's right. Prayer is uh, prayer is this moment to to notice something new. When I talk to speaking of Tzipor Shalom, when I talk to children about uh, prayer and really about any about Judaism in general, if if Judaism could be boiled down to to one idea, I think it's awareness. It's noticing the things that are happening in the world and uh, giving them meaning. Right? It, it, when, we, when we say brachot, that's exactly what we're doing. We light candles and we say a bracha because we want to give that moment meaning. We, we see a rainbow, there's a blessing, there's a bracha that we can say. When we meet a new person, there's a blessing, there's a bracha that we could say. There's all these moments in our lives and we just are trying to mark them in time, to live our lives with intention, to notice the small miracles that are happening in our lives every day. And there are a whole bunch. The Sharon says mindfulness. Yes, that's exactly what it's about. It's about opening yourself up to the possibility of amazement at every moment, that there's always something that we could notice that could lift us up, that could illuminate us, that we could be a part of creating a new moment in the world. And, uh, and so we're going to make our way back to the very beginning of, uh, of the morning service to one of my all-time favorite prayers. And uh, it's a prayer called Asher Yatsar. And Asher Yatsar is the prayer that Jews say after we go to the bathroom. And uh, I love that there's a prayer that you say after we go to the bathroom. It's, I think, an amazing idea that there are these small miracles that are happening even within our own bodies that we're supposed to acknowledge every single every single day, that there are things that happen, things that need to open properly, things that need to close properly in order for us to be able to go to the bathroom successfully. And and that's an amazing, amazing thing. And, you know, I talk to kids about that and they sort of giggle a little bit. And and then they think about it and I say, you know, that if, if I have to acknowledge that, then there's a whole bunch of things that I'm, when I'm walking about my day, that I could notice that are amazing, that I could take note of and give give meaning to, give intention to. And so I wanted to sing with you and share with you a, a melody for Asher Yatsar. And, uh, and, and what we're going to think about is just this idea of, of wonder, of noticing 
what's happening in the world around us. And it's miraculous that there's, there's all these small miracles. The, the rabbis say that, that the, the biggest miracle in our bodies is that our bodies are kind of like a sieve, right? Like when you pour pasta into a thing and all the water drains out, that's what our bodies are like because they have all these holes in them. And, and the idea, the amazing miracle is that even though they have all these holes in them, our soul is able to be contained within our bodies throughout our entire lives. It never falls out. Even though we got a lot of holes, soul never falls out. Amazing. Amazing. This, and that's the blessing that we say at the end of this. Rofet kol basar, umaflila asot. God, healer of flesh and doer of wonders. Right? What are these small wonders that are occurring every single day? And we read in Midrash Rabbah, Rabbi, Simon, Rabbi Simon said that there's no plant without an angel in heaven tending it and telling it grow. It's really, ein lecha kol esev ve'esev. There's not even a blade of grass that doesn't have an angel along with it saying to it, grow. And if every blade of grass could be so important that it has its own angel, all the more so every little thing in our lives that we might be able to find meaning in, there's a power to be able to express the beauty and intention in that moment. So I, I wanted a, a melody that would have all of the words for Asher Atzar because I wanted to remember all the words, and it's easier for me to remember the words if they're in a melody. So I wrote a melody for Asher Yatsar, but I tried to include what would, if I were trying to notice wonder and miracles in the world around me, what is it that I would notice? Right, these prayers, as we mentioned, were written by human beings. Right, they're the things that people thought were important for us to acknowledge in the world. And so that's what I tried to add in this moment and in this prayer. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing it, and hopefully you'll, you'll catch on and you'll, and you'll sing along with me. And, uh, and also, while we're, while we're singing it, I, I want you to think about, you know, what, would you, what would you say if you were writing a prayer like this? If you were writing a prayer that was about the small miracles that are happening in your life, what would you say? What would, what would this prayer be about for you? Scroll down so you can see the transliteration here too. There we go. The melody is the same for the English part and the Hebrew part, so hopefully we'll catch on together. Today for me is a new day on earth. I live it in awe and wonder how everything works. Should the grass cease to grow? Should the sun cease to glow? Should my heart cease to beat? I thank you again and again that my body is complete. I can think, I can breathe, I can hope, I can sneeze. I can laugh, I can cry, I can pray for the wonder each day. For strength come what may, for the power to Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Yatsar Adam bechokmah Uvarabo nekavim nekavim Chalulim chalulim Galui ve'adua Lifnei kise kevodecha Sheim yipateach echad mehem Yisatem echad mehem Yefshar lehitkayem velamod lefanecha lef.
לפניך. 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 ברוך אתה אדוני, רופא כל בשר ומפליא לעשות. For the wonder each day, for strength come what may, for strength come what may. to say Today for me is a new day on earth I live it in awe and wonder Steve Huberman added that, uh, you know, he said having prostate cancer, this blessing has special meaning. You cannot take for granted bodily functions. Powerful. That there are times when we notice the, the meaning and the power of the words in a totally different way, in a really important way that we, uh, that we hadn't, hadn't had to before. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. So we're, uh, we're thinking about noticing what it means to pray, what it means to, uh, to include the words of our heart in uh, giving ourselves intentions to live our lives, to, to make our lives meaningful, to connect to each other, to connect to what's really going on inside of ourselves, to allow us to be the best version of ourselves. And, uh, and so I wanted to share, share one final melody together before we take, take a little time for some questions and, and we'll have a whole bunch more time to, to sing a whole bunch more over the next couple of weeks and, uh, and some, some melodies leading us into Shabbat in a couple weeks and uh, elevating us for Hanukkah. But I wanted to move all the way back to, um, to the idea of us being a prayer, of creating prayer in the world. And we'll, we'll get to these other examples of prayer in the Bible some other time, but really we're just going to focus on this prayer, Va'anit Filati. What does it mean to be a prayer? V'anit filati, literally, and I, am I, and I am a prayer. Lecha, to you, Adonai et ratzon, in this time of need. Elohim berov chastecha, God, in infinite grace, aneni be'emeti shecha, answer me, answer me in this fullness of your truth. And, uh, you know, the, the text that I was going to share, that maybe we'll talk about some other time, it talks about some of the original prayers in the Bible. And two of those original prayers are Hagar and Eliezer. These two people who are, are not originally part of the Jewish faith, these people who are outsiders, who come in and who are the ones who really speak to God, who call out, who cry, who say, this is something that I need. I'm going to name it in the world and hope that it can manifest. And, and that's what we learn from these people who come in and join our tradition, who come and join the Jewish people. Before we get to this moment in this week's Parsha and Parashat Toldot, where Rebecca goes lidrosh et Adonai, to seek out, to seek out God. We have these people who put themselves out into the world. V'anit filati, who act as if they are a prayer in the world. V'anit filati. And, uh, and so we're going to sing these words. And, and uh, while we're doing it, just as we're, as we're closing out, as we're, as we're moving our way into this time that's a little bit darker, what does it mean to be a prayer in the world? How can we express ourselves as prayers? How can we be a prayer for other people? How can we be the ones who are lighting people up, who are being the illuminators, just like God? How can we be the ones who are illuminating the world in a time of, uh, of darkness? And... Uh, this night has been really illuminating for me. It's, it's really wonderful to get to look at your faces and, and, and sing together, even if we're far from each other. But to be in this, in this space, this virtual space together has been, has been really special for me. And I hope it's been that way for you as well. Just a moment of, uh, of music and learning together. So we're just going to sing these words, Va'anit filati. And uh, as we do, allow it to think about what does it mean to, to take these words to heart and, and be a prayer in the world. It goes like this. Ah, ah. 
ואני תפילתי לך אדוני את רצון. ואני, ואני תפילתי לך אדוני את רצון. Matovu, recognizing the good, it goes like this. Matovu, 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 Ohalecha Yaakov, Matovu. Yisrael Matovu 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 Ohalecha Yaakov Thanks so much, everyone. Those words are uh, they're words that come in the Matovu prayer in the very mor- in the morning that we say when we walk into the sanctuary, and it's powerful first words to say that the first moment when you walk in, you're saying. This is what I want to be today. I want to be a prayer. I need to be lati. And they're also the words that we say on, on holidays that are on weekdays right before we open the ark, that moment when we really open up and see if we can open up and connect in that moment, connect ourselves to the prayers of our tradition, to the words of our story in the Torah. Uh, I know we wanted to leave a little bit of time for some questions. Um, I don't know if anybody has anything they want to ask or share at this moment. While you're all thinking of what you'd like to ask or share, I just want to share with you. I know some of the people wrote in the chat, you know, thank you for lifting us all up. I got some private messages that weren't even a part of the everybody chat, but about how 
you just exude joy and appreciation and light and how we all needed this. So um, we really do appreciate that. I'm going to make a plug before um, we see if there are any questions. But um, Josh has Rabbi Josh has two more of these sessions for us in store the next two Tuesday nights. And then the following week, just before Hanukkah, as a pre-Shabbat kind of Shabbat preparation, we'll have a Thursday evening program. And then uh, culminating in a beautiful uh, concert, starting with um, Avdallah and then into uh, something for the younger set and then into something for the older set um, uh, of a Malava Malka. So we have way more of you to share and we're really pleased to be able to do that. Um, this was instead of a, a, an artist slash scholar in residence that Rabbi Josh was supposed to do on the weekend of Hanukkah. So we get to spread the joy out a little longer this way and uh, go virtual, but we really appreciate it. Um, so, so one of the questions is, I don't know if you're seeing the chat also, but how do you stay so positive? <laughs> what a question. Um, I, you know, I, I think there's, you know, I wake up in the morning and I read my two morning newsletters that I get by email and I see all the news that's going on in the world. And, uh, there's a lot that's happening. It's a, it's a time of real trauma and, and trial for both us individually and us communally and us globally. And uh, I think I, I try and take moments like this, moments of, of prayer, moments of centering, because if we don't have these moments that we can allow ourselves to feel joy, to feel music, to let ourselves be lifted up, then we're not going to have the energy to do the rest of the work in the world. And uh, that's a lot of, you know, back when we could gather together, that was what Shabbat was for me. When we could gather together on Shabbat and, and just take a moment of rest and singing and prayer together, that for me was allowing me to be able to continue the rest of the work that I was doing throughout the rest of the week. And sometimes the week can be a, a real slog and sometimes the month can and sometimes eight months can. And uh, and if we allow ourselves, you know, Susan, I, I try and take moments like this every day or every week at least to, to find moments to either or sing or, or be with people or or connect and that uh that really energizes me to to be able to to make my way through the rest of the the things that are happening thanks for the question steven so what what i do is i've been studying daf yomi so this is my 321st consecutive day and and what i so what i do each day everybody is i actually write the date, the day of the daf, and something good that happened that day. And um, so, for example, for Monday, I wrote Pfizer and Moderna had preliminary favorable results on a COVID vaccine development and initial testing. Well, that was a wonderful day. And I went back and I looked at last Friday, and all three of my kids called me and Frida before Shabbos, and we blessed them. And to me, that's a special moment. So what I physically do is I write it in the uh, notes of the Talmud. And um, it, 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 it's uh, called a gratitude journal. And I think that's, Josh, what uh, Tefillah is all about. It's, it's gratitude and finding those small moments in even just going to the bathroom uh, or the global things like Pfizer and Moderna perhaps coming up with a new vaccine. Uh, and thank you for your inspiration. Absolutely. Thank you. I love that. Thanks for sharing that with all of us. Um, all right, everyone. Well, let's, uh, let's end the same way that we began. We're going to end with that same nigun from the very beginning. But, um, but I want you to think about something. This is what I want you to think about. We're going to sing the same nigun. It's the same melody that we sang before in the very beginning, if you were here with us. But hopefully we're not going to sing it the same way as we sang it an hour ago because we've been through an experience together. We're not the same people that we were an hour ago, whether that's just a slight change or a, or a much larger change. How are you gonna sing it? How are you gonna feel it? How are you gonna let it enter into you in a different way than, than you did when we began? We'll sing it one more time. Thanks again for sharing this evening together. <laughs> I, 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 I,
everyone have an awesome evening looking forward to seeing you again next week we will see you again next tuesday thank you thank you thank you i don't think abby has ever had a group of so many people that were smiling and singing that she could highlight along with you oh i just went down the line that just speaks well for you thank you thank you thank you to abby and whitney i think we're behind the scenes there and uh, we really look forward to sharing more. Thank you for sharing your, your positivity and your nishama with us tonight.